Take my lips, O oh Lord, and speak through them. Take our minds and think through them. Take our hearts and set them on fire through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sisters and brothers, they're at it again. The Corinthian church is like a fractured family that just can't seem to get it right. Talk about conflicted. They pretty much argue about everything. Who's in? Who's out? Who's following the best missionary? Matters of sexual morality, questions about divorce and widows and remarrying, and, and of course church worship. Church worship is always a big one. Women prophets, the Lord's Supper, and finally even diversity of gifts. The divisions are many. Some of them are deeper issues than others. But whether they're minute or colossal, they tend to fracture the community. And Paul writes to bring them together to affirm the gifts. He invites them to look at the bigger, broader picture of who church is, only they only don't even know the word yet. He reminds them of where they've been and where they are. He welcomes them to community. And that's the world of church politics in a nutshell. Some of them will never change. The 50 days between Easter and Pentecost tell the story of what is an emerging idea. Of course, it's God's idea, but it takes the humans a little while to, to figure it out. We're still working on that, aren't we? Church wasn't even a word. Paul's trying to hold communities together but he's also challenging their ideas. The Holy Spirit had arrived, and the people didn't seem to be aware. They didn't have a clue, some of them. I wonder if we were in their shoes, if it would be any different. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not a one-time thing. One of the commentary writers calls the Spirit's empowerment God's initial investment in the church. Whatever happens on, after that depends on the labor of the church itself. Are we any different, I wonder? Today we wear the red symbols, and it's my favorite day because I look out into the church and it looks happy. <laughs> and it's really kind of talk about sameness. We all look kind of blended together, and it's sort of wonderful. Pentecost reminds us of the day that the disciples were gathered together. And the Pentecost story that we remember the most is the one from Acts, not the one I'm preaching from today. You know the Acts story where the wind comes up and where the whole house is filled and the disciples are there gathered and a tongue of fire rests on each one of them and all were filled with the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit filled them they began to speak in other languages and miracle upon miracle they heard their own language spoken the Spirit's amazing blazing power inflamed the gathering and when we hear that don't you just want to be there God's Holy Spirit is something that we don't fully comprehend. To proclaim God's Spirit at work requires that we share what we have in the body of Christ without violating our neighbor's territory. We all have gifts to share, every single one of us. Varieties of gifts and service that God activates. The same God of all of us activates. The Holy Spirit works faith. Do you expect the Holy Spirit to empower us? The Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit strengthens. The Holy Spirit awakens. Sometimes we find ourselves powerless because we've not counted on the Holy Spirit's help. Have we missed opportunities? Most certainly the answer is yes. The Corinthians were worried about women in worship. Can you imagine that? How they should be dressed. Glad I wore my robe this morning. What was appropriate and what was not appropriate. Paul wanted them to think about their life together. He urged them to think about their gifts in all their variety, in all the different forms, and how these function together for God. He used the language, same spirit, same Lord, same God, who activates all of them in everyone. He talked about the gifts, wisdom, knowledge, healing, working miracles, discernment, prophecy, 
speaking in various kinds of tongues and interpreting different languages. And he pointed out that their oneness in the spirit is what activated all those gifts. What if we concentrated on identifying and sharing gifts? What if we did that? Look at someone around you right now and tell them some gift that you've noticed that they have. Go ahead. Let them know. <laughs> I've noticed that you've been getting in the That was really pretty cool. I think we should do that again. Talk about it. Well, and sometimes it's just a suggestion that you can do this. Today they did. I know there's more, but I see smiles in our midst, which tells me that uh, some of you have identified some gifts. According to Julie Iovine in New York Times in the 1990s, many owners of small farms in America began to reduce their wholesale farming to a mere sideline instead and started using their property for another purpose, entertainment farming. Other terms for this new way of making a living on the farm are agritainment and agritourism. Entertainment farmers attract paying customers to their pro property with country bands, hay bale maze mazes, petting corrals, tricycle rate courses. Sitting dwelling families just can't wait to get in onto those farms for a feel of the farm life. They pay as much as $12 for admission, food, and amusements. And even like a dollar per child to frolic in a pile of straw or pick a flower. <laughs> Some farms have mazes cut into their cornfields that can take a person up to 45 minutes to navigate. Iovine reports that one farmer in Arizona makes up to $15,000 on a good weekend. In 1994, Alaska and Oklahoma introduced agritourism as official parts of their state tourism policies. The catalyst for many of these farmers to take up agritainment was, of all things, economic pressure. Sometimes a Christian or a church can resemble an entertainment farmer. For whatever reason, we're diverted, diverted from our central purpose of producing a crop. Fruitfulness in God's will for every Christian and every church is something we should be doing. That's what Paul was trying to imply. That's what Paul was trying to get the people to understand. That we're about the business of the Holy Spirit's activity. We're about the business of sharing gifts in community. We're about the business of spreading the good news and sharing the good news and becoming the good news. We have gifts to offer. So Paul wrote to highlight our giftedness and the fact that all gifts come from one spirit. While diversity of gifts can cause trouble in the church, it certainly was not meant to do so. At Corinth, the diversity of gifts threatened to become a hierarchy in which the more dramatic gifts reigned over the ones that they thought were maybe not as impressive. And Paul poo-pooed that idea and said, no, 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 all gifts are from the same God and all have an important place in the whole community. He made note also that there's no one that possesses all spiritual gifts, that all gifts were meant to be shared for the common good. Now, friends, if we were good people, we wouldn't need the Spirit. Acceptance of the Spirit as giver means that the good in your life is not yours anymore. It belongs to God. It, served, it is served in your membership in the body of Christ. That's where you find the good. The Pentecost call is to let the works of the Spirit live and breathe through you and through us together. Jesse, Jesse Jackson once advised, it's time for us to turn to each other, not on each other. What good is the church? We're given these gifts and qualities to blend together to do good for something. And sometimes it takes us a while to identify the good that we need to do. Sometimes we readily know the good that we do, but there's always more good that we can be doing. 
The church can be a place where faith is discovered, where faith is nourished and grown and developed. One group of people have been discussing the Holy Spirit since Easter um, every Sunday after church. And Dean, is this the last Sunday that your class meets together? What a rich conversation you guys have probably had. And I hope people will share what you've learned and what you've discovered in your class. God is the source of all of our gifts and the one who empowers the church to do the work that individuals are to do, but not for the sake of the individual, but for the good of all people. The gifts are given to the individual, but not for the individual. They have a broader and more inclusive purpose. We function not alone, but in community to show that God is at work through us. Now friends, I challenge you to be open and willing like a child, like those little kids today that were listening and taking it all in. They're just like sponges. I love working with them. To see how God can blow into your life and maybe adjust your attitude and change your mind and enter your heart and give you creative energy and potential. Don't tell me that you don't have it. I challenge you to pay attention to the Spirit, to enjoy and employ that power that is promised and available. Surprise yourself. You will surprise yourself. Leave behind all the years of yesterday and step directly and straightforwardly into the future with the absolute confidence that you will identify and declare that you have spirit energy in you still. And when you do, you will discover the sameness that's in all of us because God is here at work. Amen.